Hi everybody, it's uh, Alistair Lockhart here from French Entree. Uh, I'm the property director here at French Entree. Uh, and we thought this week we would do our property update in a, in a slightly different way. Um, following the success of our recent webinars, uh, a lot of you have contacted us saying that you want more video content from us. Uh, so this week we're going to do our usual French property home and life uh, and our French property weekly updates by video so so bear with me um i am talking to you from a very rainy and uh buffeted uh uk unfortunately um uh, i'm not in france uh, i was due to be in france this week uh in a lovely gite in the lot garonne area sunning myself by the pool um i'm trying not to be too bitter about it but you know one has to do what one has to do uh, and unfortunately the quarantine rules that came into place meant that um we would have had to take the kids uh, out of school for the first week, which seemed a little bit churlish um, and unreasonable of us as parents, given they haven't had proper schooling for the last, uh, whatever it is, four or five months. So, um, so I'm here in the UK uh, trying to make the best of a very rainy and windy week uh, with the family. Um, so if I'm slightly grumpy, that's, um, that, that's why. Um, in terms of the market, uh, in terms of what the market is doing, I mean, obviously it's been it's been a crazy year for, for so many reasons. Um, you know, as we head into the the summer, you know, um, well, the end of the summer now, you know, coming into the end of August. Um, you know, if you talk to our partners, you know, we uh, we have a, a a very large network of partner agencies over in France, so we can take a fairly macro, ten thousand feet view of the market. We've got agents over lots of the most popular parts of France uh, at all budget levels, so. You know, French Entree as a, as a business is a very broad church. And so that means that we can take the temperature of what's going on. Uh, and I would say that uh, there are certain geographical areas where, um, you know, things are just crazily busy. Uh, usually uh, areas where British buyers are, are very keen to buy. So your, your sort of classic areas like Brittany, Normandy, um, Dordogne, Poitou Charente, uh, Charente Maritime is very popular. Uh, and down into the longer dock, uh, all very, very busy agents, very busy throughout June, June and July. Uh, other areas, you know, ticking along, uh, but probably not quite as busy as those geographical areas. Uh, and of course, it is predominantly British buyers that are that are looking at the moment, partly because they're able to travel, unlike uh, many of our, or virtually all of our American uh, readers. Um, but also because of the deadline of Brexit at the end of the uh, the year in terms of uh, in terms of residency. So um, there's there's definitely a, a, a trend in where the uh, the British buyers are, are looking um, budget wise. Again, it's it's fairly broad. Uh, so, you know, immediately after lockdown uh, eased, I would say that we experienced uh, a polarization of the market, just as we did in, in 2008 after the credit crunch, where uh, the lower end of the market, the lower budget end and the upper end were both extremely busy. But the middle, maybe sort of the, the squeezed middle uh, was was much, much slower. Um, I would say that May, June, coming into July, that was very much the case. It's starting to even out a bit now. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, inquiries and, and having viewings with our partners right across the board in, in all price ranges. Um, but but I'd probably you know hazard that you know, either end of the spectrum are are, are busier than than the middle uh, if you like, um, and in terms of the agents, in terms of you know how how busy they are, you know a lot of them are saying to me that you know June and July was crazy, record breaking months, you know that that inevitable confluence of events with uh, lockdown. For two or three months, so the market literally just didn't move for two or three months. So all of that pent up demand in the system, um, overlaid with with Brexit, you know, and the and the desire for the British buyers to come over and 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 buy somewhere uh, before the end of the year, uh, if they can, if they can find the dream home, um, and then the third, slightly more um, ethereal variable. Um, but but lots of people have anecdotally said to me that this has been the case for them, which is. You know, lockdown, COVID, pandemic, health, family, you know, it's it's forced a lot of people to reassess their priorities. Um, and so, you know, they perhaps had been on the fence about buying a property in France for years um, and and prioritizing family, 
time, family time, space, uh, lifestyle, pace, um, but also the ability now uh, with with many employers where you can work from home wherever home might be. Um, you know, thanks to Zoom and Skype, and you know, it, you know, COVID has forced employers to be much more flexible in in where people work. So. You know, we've got a, a large number of uh, potential buyers who are looking in France who will continue to work, you know, largely in the UK and then commute back. So the, the sort of the, the Venn diagram of those three things, lockdown, easing, um, Brexit, and that sort of reassessing of priorities meant that June and July, very, very busy. August continues to be busy, but obviously, um, you know, you're into the slightly strange season where, You've got those who are coming on holiday who happen to be looking uh, at properties. So, you know, on, on one hand, there is a, a a pool of buyers who are perhaps less serious, dare I say, they're not quite ready to make that commitment. So, you know, our, our estate agency partners, bless them, do a lot of driving around, uh, spend a lot of money on petrol, um, you know, run the risk of, of, uh, of looking uh, and feeling a little bit like tourists, you know, sort of extensions of the tourist board. Uh, for potentially not a lot of reward at the end of it. Um, there's always going to be that in August. Um, but I think, you know, probably this August, there's probably less of that because there is this Brexit um, self-induced pressure to to buy a property uh, in, uh, in France. And I think as we get to, you know, come to the end of August and into September, we really are into, um, you know, probably a very strange period again. I think, you know, you've got the quarantine rules that the UK has applied to France whether France will apply reciprocity back to the UK. <clears throat> Obviously, there are lots of nationalities, particularly Americans, um, who aren't able to come to France or Europe because of uh, COVID. Um, and for British buyers, the Brexit um, deadline of the end of the year means that, you know, you're, we're kind of getting to crunch time. Um, you know, you've either got to have found your property and signed your compromis de vente you know, really in September to stand a chance of it getting through before the end of the year, or as many people are doing now is saying, I, I, I don't want that pressure necessarily to, to find somewhere to buy, but I still want to be resident in France before the end of the year. So I'm going to rent somewhere. Uh, I'm going to find somewhere to rent. Um, that will allow me to to apply for my residency. Um, and and then I can, I can, you know, cross that bridge later on about, about buying properties. Um, uh, or, or indeed, you know, just decide it's not it's not the right time. It's it's not for me. I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll happily I'll, I'll wait a bit longer. Um, but you know, there's still a phenomenal number of of buyers um, who are taking advantage of the opportunity to to get in before the end of uh, the year to secure their rights as as EU citizens, and they want to own a property. Um, so yeah, property is moving very very quickly. Um, you know, sadly, as I say, uh, American buyers, um, and to perhaps a lesser extent, <clears throat> partly because of travel rather than restrictions, you know, uh, you know a lot of our you know, readership, uh, the French entree readership and potential buyers are from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, um, you know, obviously all having difficulty physically getting to France. So with, with those uh, buyers, with those nationalities, there's a lot of research going on, lots of questions, you know, prepping and getting the the ducks in a row for when they can get over to France and actually um, spend some time on the ground, um, uh, soak up some French uh, culture and French weather uh, and and go and hopefully get inside some properties and, and have a look at them. Um, I thought uh, I'd also just give you uh, in this in this video as part of this this update, just a couple of, of top tips, um, you know, things that, that we see um, you know, with our well, with our sort of macro view of the, of the property market, um, you know, French Entree is there to help our readership and our potential buyers uh, find their dream home in France, whatever that might look like. Um, uh, but I, I think key to that is building a relationship with an agent uh, or, or possibly, you know, two or three agents. Um, uh, you know, I think personally, you know, Buying a property in another country is a huge step. It's a huge commitment. Uh, it's not to be undertaken lightly, uh, particularly if you, you know, perhaps haven't spent a huge amount of time there. You don't know the the culture or the idiosyncrasies of of the culture of that country. Um, uh, but but critically, critically, also if you don't speak the language, um, you know. And then if you want to do something that is 
a little bit more complicated than you know just buying a straightforward holiday home if you want to move over permanently um, if you're wanting to you know, put your kids into school if you're potentially wanting to run a business um, if you're wanting to do renovations if you wanted to expand the property you know you you need to have a lot of trust in the agent or agents that you're working with <clears throat> to help you not only to find the property um, you know because hopefully they're not going to find you the property and then you know leave you twisting uh, in the wind you know they will hold your hand throughout the 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 full process of buying and and beyond um you know and that was very much the case when i was in france working as an agent you know you would uh you know the, the work would i wouldn't say the work would begin when they bought the property but you know it certainly wouldn't stop as soon as the completion took place you know there was a lot of uh, support and handholding that went with looking after an international buyer uh, once they bought a property. So I think building a relationship with an agent or a couple of agents, ideally, um, is very important. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one of them is, of course, that the, the the property market in France is quite fragmented. It's very fragmented. You know, it's not like um, uh, the states, for example, or parts of Australia um, where all of the agents share all of the properties um, so you never quite know which agent has got the property that's going to be the one um, which is why you know I personally quite like working with a larger number of smaller independent agents um, you know which can make life a bit tricky and a bit interesting but you know you you just never know which agent is going to have that that gem of a property that they've been sitting on that they can't shift and, and you're the perfect buyer for it. And it may not be a property that you'll see with a larger agency, a, a major player or on right move or Zook or wherever. Um, so that's why I think it's worth hedging your bets uh, just from a property perspective and having two or three agents that, that you know, uh, agencies that you're working with. Uh, but also trust wise, um, you want to find people who uh are going to bat, you know, bat your corner. You know, they're, they're going to be on your side to to help you to find this property, uh, and that very much is a two way, you know, that's a two way uh, street. Uh, and you, you know, it, you know, in the old sort of Jerry Maguire parlance, you know, help me to help you. You know, you want to help the agents uh, as much as you can, so that they can help you in return and find you that that perfect property. Um, so I've got three tips to share with you. Um, uh, as a buyer, I mean, obviously there are there are lots, but these are just three that I've that I've picked today to share with you. Um, the first one is preparation and being specific about what you want. Um, it's hard for an agent if you're really vague about what you want, and that that could be because you just haven't decided what you want yet. You know, the old "I'll know it when I see it" is really difficult for an agent to work with. Um, you know, I've had people inquire into French entree who say, "I don't really know where I want to be in France." Um, you know, draw a line between La Rochelle and Geneva, and I want to be anywhere south of that. Well, with the best will in the world, that's a massive area. You know, you've got thousands of agencies, tens of thousands of properties, uh, potentially in that geographical area. Um, and you want to go to an agent who's going to, you know, give up their time. Um, don't forget, you know, all agents work on commission. If they don't sell a house, they don't get paid. So, you know, you, you want them on your side and being really. Uh, not even deliberately vague, but just vague about where you want to be because you haven't decided yet actually makes the agent's life really, really difficult. Um, so, you know, if you don't know where you want to be, then I would absolutely recommend that, you know, you do your preparation and your research and you come over and you spend time in those areas or you do as much desk research as you can in order to whittle down where you want to be or find a resource like French Entree, for example, where you know you can have a conversation with somebody and say look i want to be somewhere where it's you know sunny 300 days of the year fine i want to be somewhere where there's proper seasons i want snow and i want you know really good weather in the summer okay well this is where you want to be um or i like uh i had one the other day you know a, a client wants to make sure that the landscape therein is you know quite rolling undulating countryside um but one of the areas that she'd mentioned was you know, quite flat and boring, um, you know, so it's there are resources that you can go to to help you to chip away and whittle down to the areas where you want to be. And it's then that you should approach an agent uh, and uh, either through us or, or, you know, however you're getting in touch with your agents, but, you know, ideally through us. Um, and then you can 
say to an agent, you know, this is roughly the area I want to be in. Um, that, does, that doesn't preclude you from talking to two or three different agents in two or three different areas in order to cover the bases and hedge your bets. If you haven't quite nailed to a wall where you want to be, just don't go to them all and say, I want to be in southwest France somewhere. Can you help me? Because with the best one in the world, they're not going to take you seriously. They will, I guarantee you, they will think this buyer doesn't know where they want to be. They're not ready to buy. They're not serious. Um, so I'm not going to spend as much time on them as somebody over here who has quite clearly said they want to be in, in my part of the forest. So I think area is is a really important one, but also being specific about your must haves. Uh, you know, I like asking people, you know, what are your must haves and what are your must have nots? You know, what are your deal breakers? You know, if you want to be somewhere which is really quiet, then make sure that that is conveyed to the agent several times. You probably need to say it several times. You know, I don't want to hear any road noise. I don't want any neighbours overlooking me. Um, I, you know, I, I don't drive. So I want I need to be in a village or on the edge of a village or a town where there are shops that I can walk to. I don't want to be having to rely on public transport in the middle of rural France because that's not really going to work. So spend time thinking about your 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 deal breakers, the, the things that you absolutely must have for this to work as a project and make sure that those are conveyed because that will help the agent. You know, they'll be able to, you know, if you send over a link to a property, they'll be able to go, right, rule that one out, rule that one out, rule that one out. And you'll go, well, hang on a minute, I like those three properties. Yeah, but you told me you needed to be within walking distance of shops and none of those are. Oh, okay. What well, you know, it's that toing and froing with the agent, but it can only really work if you know or have a good sense of what you want. Um, you know, the, the, the other the other end of that e equation is that you send over a, a dissertation um with a massive long list of requirements. And you know, there is there comes a point where there's too much. There comes a point where that there's too much too much information given um you know which could make you look like a you know high maintenance buyer uh, and again that might slightly count against you so you want to find that right balance in the middle um funny enough i had somebody only this week who sent me and it doesn't happen very often uh, who sent me a mood board essentially it was a pdf document um and you know they had put some pictures of what they wanted the entrance to look like, what they wanted the main house to look like, you know, all randomly picked from different estate agency websites, including our own, you know, what they wanted the staircase to look like, because they had a very particular idea of what they wanted that to be, what they wanted the garden, the view. And that's actually really helpful to be able to send to, you know, from my perspective, to be able to send to one of our partner agents and say, if you've got something that looks roughly like this, this client will be interested. If it doesn't look like this, you know, if it's a bungalow that looks a bit dull and has a small garden and no view, just because it's in the right area, don't send it to them. This is what they want. So have a think about different ways in which you can convey your requirements to the agents. Uh, the second tip is around viewings. Um, this comes up a lot. Um, I think there is an assumption um, that getting a viewing with a property in France is as easy and as straightforward as getting a viewing of a property in your home country, you know, particularly if you're in the UK uh, or you're in the States, where it's a relatively straightforward exercise to, to contact an agent in the morning and say, I want to go and look at that house this afternoon. Boom, you're in, you go and see it, you decide if you want it, you make an offer. That can happen in France, but it's less likely because there are more variables in play, you know, and you need to understand what those variables are so that you can, you know, give the agent as much notice as possible. You know, I'll, I'll receive emails saying I want to look at these three properties tomorrow. You know, and I, you know, and you know, one does one's best to to get the the client into those properties. But you know, that's in rural France, that's not a lot of notice to get into a property. You know, have a think about you know the different variables that might be in play. The property might be empty. Uh, there's a high probability that the property might be empty if it's out in rural France. If it's a renovation project, there's nobody living in it. So where are the keys? The keys could be with a neighbour. Uh, the neighbour might not be around. The keys could be with the notaire. The notaire might not be open. The keys might be with um, another agency if the property is on with multiple agencies, which happens a lot in France. You know, the number of times I had to go to another agency uh, to to borrow the keys to get into a property and then have to take the keys back to that agent. You know, that's a real pain, but it happens a lot. Um, 
It could be that the vendor wants to physically come and be there for the viewing. You know, and if the vendor doesn't live locally, uh, and we regularly have situations where vendors will drive, you know, half an hour, an hour more even, to get to a property, to open up the property, you're ready for the viewing. Um, you know, if the vendor's not available uh, on, you know, tomorrow, then chances are you're not going to get into the property. But if you'd given them a week's notice, then you you might have stood a chance of, of getting in. Um, so so bear in mind that, you know, certainly properties in, in, in rural France, um, you know, where you're, you need the, the stars to align in order to get into it. You need the agent to be available or an agent within that agency to be available. You need to be able to get to the key if the agency doesn't hold the key or you need to be able to get to the key holder, um, which may be the vendor or a neighbor. Um, so, so do bear that in mind. It's not as easy as just strolling in um, uh, the later on that day and, and getting into the, the property. So where you can and where you've done your research in advance, you know, try to give as much notice as you can to the agent for the viewing. Um, and then, of course, please remember to to turn up. Um, you know, if you can't make it for whatever reason, um, you know, things happen. You know, you might change your mind. You know, quite often people will do a drive through the village beforehand and go, oh, I don't want to live there. You know, and they, if you if you are going to cancel, please give the agent notice that you're going to cancel. Don't just not turn up. Um, for, for these very reasons, you know, we have had situations where vendors have come, um, you know, quite far to open up the property. And then the, the potential buyer just doesn't show because they've, you know, it was raining or they've decided it's not for them. You know, and that's just really unfair and not a very good sport about the whole thing. Um, so, you know, do try to give notice where you can uh, in order to get the viewing. But also, you know, be polite and courteous about the, the whole process. And, and, you know, if you're not coming, do give the agent, uh, you know, drop them a, a text or, or an email uh, and give them fair warning that for whatever reason you you won't be there. Um, and then the, the the third thing in terms of, you know, how to build your relationship with a an agent is to give them feedback. You know, that's really useful because chances are you're not going to get it right on the first property. You're pre possibly not going to get it right on the first viewing trip. You know, what you thought you wanted evolves. You know, the, the, the condition of property that you thought you could cope with in reality is not the case and you don't want to touch it with a barge pole and you actually want something quite different. You thought you wanted hectares of land until you saw what hectares of land looks like and actually you'd be quite happy with an acre, maybe half an acre, actually, thanks very much. You know, so your requirements will inevitably evolve as you go through the viewing process. So the more feedback you can give the agent, you know, who has, you know, uh, given up their their time, uh, you know, the, the vendor might have given up their, their time to show you the property, you know, give as much feedback as you can to the agent so that they have a second crack of the whip um, in finding you, uh, you know, a different property, but one that better suits your needs. Now you've seen this one. Um, it, it happens a lot, uh, but please try, please don't ghost the agent. Don't just disappear off the face of the earth. Even if you're viewing a property uh, and you're on your way back to the airport and you're shooting back home, you know, please uh, you know, this is a real plea from me, you know, please drop the agent a line, you know, thanks very much, that wasn't quite right, or I've got questions, you know, or actually we've decided that we want to go down this route rather than this route, can you help me with that? You know, the more feedback you can give, the better the relationship will be, the more the agent will then give you a call or drop you an email when they're about to go and list a property that they think is going to be perfect for you, um, they're more likely to get in touch with you and, and let you know. Um, and that's the relationship that you want with an agent. You, you you want to get to a place where you have a relationship with an agent whereby when they ring you to say, or they email you to say, you know, you've been out two or three times, I've got a pretty good idea what you want. This property is coming onto the market. I think you need to get on a plane or get in a car and, and come and see it that you go, yes, absolutely, we need to get on a plane or go in the car and go and see it because, you know, there's a very high chance this is going to be the one. That's that's where you want to get to with a relationship with, ideally, two or three agents. Um, and then you've always got us 
you know, French entree as backup for your search uh, in terms of asking questions, picking brains, getting second opinions. Um, but obviously it's the agent on the ground who's going to look after you for the viewings and, and the negotiation. Um, so just to recap on those three top tips for a uh, for a buyer to build a good relationship with an agent. Number one is preparation and uh, and being specific about your requirements. Number two is around viewings, giving as much warning as you can for the viewing so that you stand the best chance of getting into the property, because um, obviously there are lots of variables in play. Uh, and the third one is give feedback. Don't ghost to the agent. Don't just disappear off the face of the earth. Um, you know, give the agent feedback and they will then be able to help you to refine and, and move forwards and hopefully find a, 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 a better property that, that suits your needs. So. I hope that's been useful as a quick roundup of the market and uh, a couple of useful nuggets. Um, as always, don't hesitate to get in touch if you're uh, if you're looking for a property in France, wherever that may be, whatever budget that may be, um, or if you've just got general questions about living in France, moving to France. Obviously, FrenchEntree.com has a massive amount of resources, thousands of articles about all different aspects of life uh, um, in France. Um, and obviously on our property uh, database, we've got properties you know, right across France at, at all budget levels. So um, feel free to get in touch. Um, there'll be a, a form or an email at the bottom of this video to get in touch, but you can always email us uh, at propertysales at FrenchEntree.com. That's property sales at frenchentree.com. Um, that will come to me, Alistair Lockhart. I'm the director of French Entree. Um, and, and lastly, you know, if you liked this update by video rather than in article form, um, then let us know. You know, we, we always welcome feedback. We're always trying to make sure that we can um, uh, deliver the information in a, in a really digestible way for you. As I say, we've run a couple of webinars which have been phenomenally successful. Um, uh, but if you uh, liked this update, then uh, drop us a line to that email address, property sales at frenchentree.com. Um, and um, hopefully we'll do more of them in the future. Thanks very much.